Everyone, welcome to our continuing discussion of a sensation of perception. This time we're talking about depth perception. So like many predatory animals, we have two eyes on the front of our head. This gives us a couple of advantages, right? We may not have as wide of a vision, visual field as prey animals that have eyes on the sides of their heads, but it gives us a couple of things. One, we have retinal disparity. Our eyes receive slightly different information, right? Because our eyes are in slightly different places, we get slightly different um, stimulation from the same object. This allows our minds to infer the distance of an object. In the same way that our, our ears can do this with the sort of difference in the uh, way that the sound waves are landing on one ear versus another, our eyes can do this with the difference in the images that our retinas receive. The greater the disparity or the difference in the retinal image, the closer the object seems to be. You can sort of get a sense of this for yourself by taking your finger and just putting it between your eyes and then looking off into the distance. You can see that when something is close, you have two separate sort of images of the finger in front of your face. As it moves further away from you, the two images get closer and closer together until they converge. The disparity in that retinal image gives you information about how close the object is. The visual cliff is a test of depth perception. So uh, basically in this task, baby is placed on a, uh, a cliff right here. This is glass, so we're not, we're not risking the baby falling. But the baby sits here on a patterned shelf, and then below there is a shelf with the same pattern. Um, even a newborn can tell that this pattern is smaller and farther away. This denotes depth, and the baby will not crawl off over this cliff um, and risk hurting itself. It can tell that this bit is further away than this. So we also have a number of visual cues that do not rely on having um, binocular vision. Monocular cues rely on something that just one eye can see. Um, so relative size is the first of these that we're going to talk about. We interpret familiar objects, which are of known size, as farther away when they are smaller, right? So here we have two cats that are of similar size. We don't think that this is a giant cat and this is a tiny cat. We think that this is a regular sized cat that's close to us, and this is a regular sized cat that's far away from us. Despite the fact that the image of this cat on our retina is very big and the image of this cat on our retina is very small, we know that these are the same sized cat. Thus, we can infer things about the distance of this cat relative to this cat. This cat's just far away. Likewise, we know the Washington Monument isn't a part of this person. Uh, we know how big the Washington Monument is. We know how big this person is. We can infer that the Washington Monument is far away. Okay, the concept of overlap or inter interposition. We know that when one object blocks the view of another, we assume the blocking object is between us and the blocked object. So here we have a cat and a dog cuddling. We know that this cat is closer to us than the dog is, right? The cat is occluding part of the view of the dog. We don't assume that this is some sort of weird cat-dog hybrid where they are one form. Um, and we can tell that the cat is in front of the dog because the cat is blocking our view of the dog. The cat is between us and the dog. Aerial perspective. This is the idea that faraway objects often appear hazy or slightly blurred by the atmosphere. So we know that the blurrier something is, the further away it tends to be. Texture gradient. This is what it sounds like. As something extends into the distance, details become gradually less clearly defined. So standing here in a field of um, cranberries, it looks like it is the, the sort of more um, closely together these dots are and the less detailed they are, we can infer they're further away. Likewise, on cobblestones, the um, well, less well-defined this texture pattern becomes, the further off it is. This cracked desert, we see the same thing. As a pattern fades towards the horizon, it becomes less well-defined and more closely packed. We are able to infer that um, things are further away as the texture gradient uh, decreases. So linear perspective, if we know that things are straight lines, the further away they get from us, the more they tend to converge, right? So these straight lines of tulips look like they're closer together the further away they get. We know that these are not growing together. We just know that because of linear perspective, they appear closer together the further away they are, similar to the texture gradient. So there are some tricks we can have uh, with linear perspective. So these two red lines meet your retina being the same size. So if you look at these two red lines, this one looks smaller than this one, right? This is because of our perception of linear perspective. We know that things converge as they get further away or they appear to. So we have sort of a perceptual correction process that's happening where 
we know that the distance between this point and this point must be greater than the distance between this point and this point, right? In reality, this is a smaller distance than this. But as far as it goes with the image on our retina, this red line is the same distance as this red line. If you don't believe me, we can move them. And that's not a trick. Those are actually the, the same length. This is just sort of a useful thing that our brains do, right? If we see something taking up this much space, we know that it has to be smaller than something taking up this much space. It's a very rare circumstance where it's an artificial thing like this. All right, next up is motion parallax. This is the idea that while we're moving, we can tell which objects are farther away because it takes longer to pass them. So this island over here um, is further away than the grass and the signs that are on the shoreline here. The waves in the distance are a little bit further off than the side of the road. We can tell that because things that are close appear to pass by very quickly, and things that are further away tend to move by much more slowly. That's motion parallax. Okay, that's it for our discussion of depth perception.